George Bird, 56 years old from outside of Boston, Massachusetts, was drinking for 40 straight years and then joined our 90-day quit drinking program and is now, I think, on day 95, alcohol-free. And he seems to be feeling good. George, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Really, really great, actually. I, I, yeah, yeah, it is 95, actually. Yep, 95 and, days. And what results did you achieve from going 95 days, at least so far, being alcohol-free? Well, I've got to say, not what I expected. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before. It's it's surprising. You know, you start the venture thinking, okay, I'm going to be alcohol free for 90 days. And there's a little bit of trepidation with that. But actually, the alcohol piece sort of led into a bigger sort of in, more of a self uh, introspective look at, at what I was doing and what I was up to. I didn't realize how much alcohol affected me until uh, probably into it, uh, you know, maybe 20 days or something like that. And then it just kind of hit me, wow, it's it's really manipulating my life. And after 90 days, you do a lot of self-evaluation, which is good. It's really good. It's a great experience. So, so what was life like before you joined the program in terms of your drinking? Maybe just give us some context for the 40 years of <laughs> oh, <well>, drinking. <laughs> well, you know, I think like many, I didn't think I was a heavy drinker. Um, and then discovered one day that when I looked in the liquor cabinet, I realized how much I was actually consuming. And it, and it kind of freaked me out. Um, I was a regular night after work drinker. So do the work thing, come home, have dinner, chill, have a, a drink or two or three or four. And my pours, as um, I would say, as I, as I, as I kept going, the, the, you know, the shot would go from a shot to a shot with a little extra to a shot with a little, little bit more. And then so the drinks were becoming mostly my drink of choice was vodka at the time. We're, we're pretty hefty vodka drinks. And it and it um, was just basically a means of me um, swallowing up the evening for most part. I mean, swallow being a funny word, but, it, you know, it I would come home and um, and, and emphasize myself. It was really just a really numbing effect. And I, it scared me. I got to a point where I thought, wait a minute. I noticed how much I was drinking. I thought, wait, this isn't healthy. It reminds me a bit of what I grew up with, with my parents. And um, I was ne never happy with that as a kid. And so it was sort of this, the light bulb went off and I thought, wow, you know, I got to nip this in the bud now before it gets too, too far down the road. And what were the, some of the ramifications of your drinking? I know you said that you were probably numbing yourself. And what were some of the adverse effects of your, your drinking over the years that maybe ultimately compelled you to, to take the action that you did? Well, I, I was battling anxiety. That was one thing. So at the top of my mind, the anxiety, I had pretty bad anxiety. And I thought the drinking actually was, was fixing that. And it wasn't. It was actually really counterproductive to that. So what I would do is I'd wake up in the middle of the night, you know, like this, thinking, oh, I can't believe I just had another night of drinking. And um, then the anxiety would pursue itself. And then I'd spend the next, the morning, you know, trying to fight the anxiety, um, which then spilled into the workday. And my overall um, production, honestly, was down. I would, I was, I didn't think, again, the thing that's so interesting is when you're in the middle of it, you don't realize how tarnished you actually are. You know, I thought, oh, I'm pretty sharp. I'm doing pretty good in business. You know, but then you start, th then when you're not, you realize, wow, I was pretty much in a fog. And um, my focus was not as sharp as it should have been. And I, and I found myself in meetings kind of losing track of the content, kind of lo losing track. My motivation was kind of down. Um, you just don't feel like yourself. And, and I, again, you know, when you're in the middle of it, I don't think I was that aware of it. But now being out of it and hearing responses from the people that I work with saying, wow, you're really on point. You sounded great today. You know, your, your things are, you look great. You feel bright. You, you don't realize how bad off you really were. And I think it's because you're in the middle of it, just living day to day. And it's a habit. And it's just what it is. But then all of a sudden you start putting the pieces together and think, well, maybe I wasn't really firing as well as I should have been. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm the director in a company and I don't have room to be not performing. I'm, I'm there to support as my position to support a staff and a firm. And if I'm not doing that, that's a sure way to get fired. And um, 
or or looked down upon. And I didn't I didn't want to be there. Thank you for sharing that. What was the catalyst then for you taking action, or what had you tried previously to quit, if at all, mm. that hadn't worked? Well, I guess you know there were there were multiple programs that I found on Facebook, and and I tried different ones. And honestly, I was really um, many of the the one of the other programs specifically that I tried was very female oriented, and and I had a hard time resonating. Um, with a crowd because it didn't, it, it, it just was slightly off. And not, not, not that it was totally female. I think it was just a resonance thing. I didn't resonate. And then I saw your uh, uh, pitch on Facebook and I did, first did the 30 day. And I thought, well, this is pretty cool. Let me give a 30 day a try. And did successfully did the 30 day and went back to drinking and I ended up drinking more than I was before I started. And I just thought, oh, huh, this is not what I expected to have happen. Um, so, you know, continued my drink for a while. And then it, then, it, then it hit me again. I thought, okay, you, you're, you're back where you were. You can't do this. And so there was a pitch that you had put for uh, the entrepreneur 90-day uh, program, and then you had some other things that were out there. And I thought, you know what? I, I really appreciated your voice, the tone. There was a lot of really good Facebook posts that were going on. The community seemed really tight. So that's that was really what drew me to it, and and perpetuated my interest, and in then ultimately, you know, signing up for the 90-day. And so, what was your experience during the ninety days? Obviously, you ended up enrolling in Project Ninety, which is my ninety days quit drinking program. And just to be clear, it's not to just to get you to ninety days and then you go and celebrate with a drink, right? Because <laughs> but that is not the point. The no. point is to get you ninety straight days alcohol free. So then, when you hit ninety days, you're like powerfully choosing. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep being right. alcohol free as a lifestyle. I'm going to embed this as a lifestyle. So, first question. Did you have a celebratory drink at day 90? Uh, let me see. What did I do? I think I had my favorite drink right now is um, actually club soda with a big squeeze of fr some fresh key limes and a little dash of sugar just to take off some of the bite <laughs> over some ice. That was my celebratory drink. <laughs> <laughs> so I did have a drink, but it had no alcohol in it. And I had no, I had no desire. You know, somebody said, you're going to go out and celebrate and have a bunch of beer or, you know, have yourself a martini or something. And if I thought about it and then I thought, Oh yeah, no, no, I'm, I don't no, Absolutely not. I, I just want my lime drink. And um, so that's how I celebrated. Yeah. It's interesting after the 30 days, which I think is an, is a great program and you meet a lot of great people in it. I think it tests the waters you know, it sort of says, okay, I can succeed. I can do the 30 days. And, and then you come out, you feel like you're a hero and you do feel physically different, which I was really impressed by. I mean, I did, I lost weight in my face. I felt more awake. I was sleeping a lot better. The 90 though, stepping it up, I, I was worried at the end of the 90 and I mentioned it to you. And I think I mentioned it to some other people. I was freaked out. I thought, oh my God, 90 days is going to come. And then what? It's like, I've just learned how to pack my parachute I've learned all this stuff on the ground and now I'm flying up in the plane and I got to jump out of the plane and I'm freaked out. Like I know I've had all the training, but I think what happened was there was a click. Something clicked in my head that said, I, I don't, I don't have the urge anymore. I don't have the desire anymore. It's different. It's really different. And if I was to even conceive of going back to drinking, which I don't, I can't imagine doing at this point, Honestly, I don't know how I would react to it. I, you know, I think, oh, well, if somebody's having a wedding or something, you're going to cheers with champagne and stuff like that. I can cheers with anything. I can cheers with a glass of cold water. I can cheers. I, how many times have I cheers with an empty hand like this? Dozens and dozens of times if there wasn't a drink in my hand. So it's a different thing. I, I don't have the urge anymore, which is brilliant. You know, just feel really good. Yeah, wonderful. And just describe your experience inside of the groups. Is obviously part of the process or the formula that I've identified to help people get to 90 straight days alcohol-free but then continue alcohol-free is um, appropriate accountability, um, a coach and a mentor, yeah. uh, a supportive community, fun, 
Yeah. And then ultimately skin in the game, i.e. you're making an investment in, your, in yourself in terms of money and time right. Right. Um, and commitments and, and, and things like that. So what was, what was fun about the process? What, was, what, what did you feel challenged by during the process? And what ultimately do you, do you feel which part of that process was the, was the thing that really made this happen for you? Well, I have to say the fun piece of it came in after a few weeks of, you know, the, the initial part, I'm not going it, to, it's hard. You know, it's a challenge. You really are challenging yourself. So, um, and that, that I think where in the beginning is where the community really, you meet a lot of really great people. I met some really great people. I, I now call my friends and we're in contact and you and Kevin and others are, are I consider, I, I've shared more intimate information with these people and I've, than I have with anybody else. Um, and then I think part of that drives some of the fun because we do have great conversations when we have our Facebook connections and we have our, our meetings in the evenings and stuff like that. You know, it's it's not all, oh, woe is me, I'm not drinking. There are some really fun, lighthearted times which people kind of crack up about what they're going through. And, you know, I think being able to share experiences makes a huge difference. So the program in the sense that, you know, you have your one-on-one -on -one thing, which is really awesome because you can really spill your guts. And then the group thing, I was going to say, you don't spill your guts, but you kind of do. I mean, there's some pretty intense moments, but they're really, they're really earnest. It's not, it's not fake. It's not people making shit up. It's, just, it's the real thing. And um, it makes a big difference. And, and the fun part, you know, it just comes with it. As, as you succeed, I think you start patting yourself on the back a little bit. And the group pats yourself on the back, too. So it, it, you really feel motivated. And um, it makes a big difference. And, and mind you, it's not always easy, but you do know that you've got somebody, there's a lifeline out there that you can go to, whether it's somebody you've met in the group or, or you or Kevin or somebody else. There's, there's, you know that there's a lifeline out there to talk to somebody. There's always somebody to talk to. And so what do, have you identified were your actual results from doing these 90 straight days alcohol-free? Well, my my graduation conversation was pretty impressive. I mean, I was I broke down a little bit because I didn't realize how much I had changed in the process. I think what I've succeeded in is becoming more myself. I'm more my earnest self. I'm the fun guy I've always been. I don't feel distracted by drinking. Um, honestly, my I think my temperament's really really modulated and is is, is much flat is much more consistent. My family has said that I'm not overreactive anymore. Um, my workplace says that I'm really productive and um, they, they just love having me around. They've always loved having me around, but now even more, um, they're really interested in hearing what I'm doing. Um, they're really supportive of the program and they want to know how things are you know, proceeding and stuff like that. Um, and my productivity as a whole, I'm much more eager to do stuff. I don't wake up in the morning now and go, oh, there's another day, you know. I wake up and I'm pretty damn excited. I get up at four and five in the morning sometimes and I'm excited. When I was drinking, I would never get up at four in the morning. There was no way in hell I was going to get up at four in the morning. I was too busy putting my hands on my <laughs> So, no, it's great. It's been great. And, and, you know, a combination of my social life feels better. Family life feels a ton better. Work life feels just more clear. And I just feel a lot more ambitious. Yeah, wonderful. And... What would you say to someone who is considering enrolling in one of my programs to quit drinking, who's maybe on the fence and maybe has either some skepticism or maybe they have some reservations, some fear that maybe they won't be able to do it or complete it, yeah. which would be perfectly natural because almost everyone who joins has that fear in the beginning. Um, what would you say to that person who's considering taking action on this right now do it just do it you know if, you, if you're considering it at all do it it seems scary it seems like you're making this big leap but when you get into it you realize you're actually doing the best thing you can for yourself and that's and you'll discover that more as you get into it not everybody succeeds the first week not everybody succeeds you know the first day but i think the thing that's great about it is that you know the doors don't close the doors are open and, you know, it might take a few tries to actually succeed to your 30, 
but that's okay. And I think that's the beauty of what you offer up is like, you're not, you're not, you don't punish anybody. You get it. Everybody gets it. And everybody knows that it takes, might take one or try or two tries or three tries, but, and that's, you know, it, that's the beauty of it. And, but, but do it. Don't, don't let it scare you away. It's, it's just alcohol for God's sakes. You know, it's, it's a drink. And I think it's easy for me to say now, because I'm, I've gone through, you know, 90 days of it. And I would never have said that when I started, I was pretty freaked out, but the support and the group and the friends, you know, if you fail, there's no such thing as failing. I would say, if you fail the first day, you fail the first day, if you fail the second day, so what, pick it up and start it over again and you'll get there, but, but do it. Just, just give yourself a chance and do it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And what, does life have in store for you now? What is your your plan now that you're on day 95 as we're recording this? How long are you planning on going? What do you feel like you want to create now? Wow, well, that's that's the big thing. And I think this is where I want to continue my work with you is I feel like I've got a new lease on, you know, I, I sort of said, I said openly, you know, okay, I'm 56. And I might, if I'm really lucky, I'll have 30, 30 more years. I said 30 days, I have 30 years. Um, I want those to be equal, if not better than the first half. So the challenge for me now is to, to build up the new house, to, so to speak, you know, the, the house in here and um, to go for it and, and look at the opportunities and, and with, a clear, with a clear window, not, not the fog that I was in. So what it has to come, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited because I'm, you know, I think I've got a million things running through my head that I want to do. I want to start a business. I want to go traveling. I want to do this. I want to do that. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to it and, and, and moving forward and, and hopefully, you know, continuing on with, with you and the team and seeing where life goes. Wonderful. George, congratulations, mate. I'm so happy for you. And I know I've said this to you offline before, but I want to thank you as well for bringing such a positive energy to the group on our, on our weekly group calls uh, and for sharing and being so open and transparent because now you and your new way of being is inspiring those who come behind you. And uh, I think you've seen that on some of the group calls during Project 90 where you've shared openly and authentically about some of your challenges and about some of your wins. And, and that helps someone who's on like day four or day seven or day 27, who's feeling a little challenged. And now you get to inspire them to stay the path. So I want to thank you for that. Um, yeah, I appreciate for- that. That's great. I, I, that's, it's wonderful. Yeah. George Bird, congratulations, mate. Well right. done, and I can't wait to see what the next 90 days and the next nine years and the next 30 years have in store for you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's going to be a fun road. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project 90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project 90, that's one word, project 90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.